Hello everyone. Uh, in this video, we will learn about how the company can be winded up their own business. So there are a few steps which we have to take in according to the Company Act 2017, and you can say according to the Liquidation of Bankruptcy Act 2016. So here we go. The whole story will gonna be uh, for winding up of company. Okay. If we move forward, we can find out. That what is actually the meaning of winding up? This is actually a very wordy presentation for my students. Um, but here I'm gonna surprise it that if any com any company, okay, uh, like winding up is, is means by which the dissolution of a company is brought about and its assets are realized and applied in the payment of his debt. Like if you're gonna sell your assets in order to uh, pay off your debt, and after the payment of your debt the remaining balance if available is gonna be paid back to the shareholders of the company according to the capital which they have <laughs> okay so this is actually the primary meaning of the winding up and why winding up is required there are a number of reasons like maybe uh company has decided to shut down their business due to any reason maybe due to loss Maybe the company has become bankrupt or insolvent that they are not able to set off their loan, or you can say uh, they are passing away their company to the promoters as well. So there are numerous reasons due to which a company can be set off. It is actually a myth that a country, any any company can be uh, dissolved only due to the loss. No, this is not only the reason. There are numerous reasons in uh, in corporate world we have examples of profitable companies who just winded, winded up their businesses due to any reason. So Company Act 2017, here winding up means winding up under this act or liquidation under the insolvency and bankruptcy code 2016. So this is actually a uh, term can be used in uh, two different, um, you can say, uh, act. So winding up is actually leading to the dissolution of the company most of the people feel that dissolution and, and winding up is same no winding up is the primary step that will lead to the ultimate step of the dissolution of a con of a company so during the whole process before the dissolution before the dissolution and from the first initial stage that is winding up the company exists the entity exists okay it does not uh, disappear but after uh, but when the dissolution took place the company has been evaporated you know there will be no company so before dissolution a company can be sued but to, to bring in under the tribunal, uh, tribunal of law and any court by any creditor or debtor of by any individual party so meaning of a dissolution of a company is actually when a company dissolve it ceases to be exist as i said before so in dissolution company's name shall be struck off by the registrar from the registrar of companies and this shall be you know uh it has been published uh, uh as a notice to uh, you could say sorry uh, for the general public to for the knowledge and awareness so it is actually the end of the company now what is the difference between again uh dissolution and winding up in during the winding up in a point one it is actually a method by which you can dissolve your company okay uh, once again it is initial step but dissolution is the end result of winding company again two different uh stages so we should aware about it if anyone uh bring your case a study that company has winded started winded winding up their business and now no one can sue no any company any individual can sue because it exists but if it is like the firm, the company has been dissolved now no one can sue yeah this is right so the second one legal entity continues okay but and the dissolve no legal entity exists due to the dissolution as the last step has been reached. In the third one, we can say company may be allowed to con continue its business as far as it's necessary for the beneficial winding of the company, like they have a few obligations, they have a, they have a contract, you know, so um, 
for the perform to fulfill the contract, they may be allowed to perform their work. But after the dissolution, company ceases to be exist. They cannot perform their business activities, so business duties, obligations as well. <clears throat> now, what are the modes of of, of a uh, winding up of a company? The first one is a compulsion. It's a compulsory winding of a company, and the second one is a voluntary one. So the difference between these two. So in the first step, the compulsory winding up of a company, uh, it is due to the ordered by the court or you can say a tribunal as a compulsory winding if company if court declared uh, declared that the company should be winded up now it is the, the compulsory obligation now in which circumstances the court or you can say tribunal uh, issue the notification of uh, company uh, winding up in the first one when a company is unable to pay staff it's the most common reason like if company has to pay a 10 million debt but their authorized capital is like 8 billion and there's no retainer name no more assets available so the company is in, un in an unstable stage so uh, court may declare that a com that they have to dissolve the company in the second one, the company has by special resolution res resolved that the company may be binded by the tribunal if any company called a meeting of all shareholders or any shareholders as they were voting rights and they, they proposed that now we are going to dissolve this company due to any reason and this special reason passed by the three-fourth majority of the quorum then the company will kind of be um you can say dissolve and the third one if a company has acted against the interest of the sovereignty on integrity of india or any other country the security friendly relation with the foreign states, public order, decency, or morality, then the, they are forced to be dissolved. And the last one is if the tribunal has ordered the winding of, of a company and the, ch and the chapter, uh, you could say 15, then it will be dissolved. <clears throat> now, circumstances in which companies may be winded up a tribunal, in the fifth point is if uh, someone uh, on an application made by the registrar any the person authorized by the central government by notification that this act the pre this, the tribunals of the opinion that the affair of the company has been conducted in a fraudulent manner or the company was formed for fraudulent or unlawful purpose so in short if company is doing an unlawful business or they are doing fraud with the customers or the creditors so uh, in this case the tribunal may issue the notification of the dissolve of the company so the company should be dissolved within a lot time limit now if the company uh, fail to file uh, its financial statement or any returns for immediately uh, for the last five consecutive financial years then they are forced to be dissolution and if the company's opinion, uh, court provide the opinion that it is now just or equitable that the company should be wind up due to any reason, then these are the cases where the company should be dissolved according to the uh, opinion of the tribunal. Now, petition for winding up. A petition for a compulsory winding up of a company may be filed in tribunal by any of the following person. Okay, now it is the starting point by company, any creditor or creditors, or you can say any contributor or contributories, or any person specifying clause A, B, and C together. The registrar, any person authorized by the central government that's that behalf, or in a case finding under clause C or subsection one of section two seventy one by the central government or state government. So any of these above person can file a petition for the compulsory winding up of a company and specify the reason behind it that why they are going to file the petition. Now the second one is a voluntary winding up. It is, it is uh, something you know you can say a positive winding up because the court has not been involved in this case initially. But in the previous case, the court was involved in order to issue the declaration for the uh, dissolution of the company. So in this case, company may be dissolved. Like if a company in general meeting passes a special resolution for, uh, for uh, uh, when they get the three-fourth majority in order to wind it up voluntarily, 
so after so when they have decided the date and that special resolution that in that date we're gonna dissolve this company so that after the expiry of that date the company will gonna be will be dissolved automatically so it is a voluntarily due to any reason like maybe in future they are not uh, they feel that we have to dissolve this company or we have to move forward and we will do something different so there are numerous reasons but it is voluntarily there's no bad news within a company okay now liquidation and then insolvency and bankruptcy act the voluntary winding up provision has been shifted from the act 2013 and 2017 to the code liquidation and the insolvency and bankruptcy code 2016 okay it is uh, a different code it relates to the reorganization and insolvency resolution of the companies and partnership firms and individuals in a time bound manner okay it uh, it has briefly explained that how any sole proprietor or a firm or a company can be dissolved or, or declared an insolvent or they reorganize the organization so in the last point, it has been that it, it applies to matter relating to the insolvency and the liquidation of a company with a minimum amount of default is rupees one lakh. Okay, and maybe increase up to rupees one crore by the government by notification. So these code, the above mentioned code can be applied according to the limit of the default which may have seen. Now, the court has two stages, insolvency, resolution, and process. It is a stage during which financial creditors assess whether the debtor's business is viable to continue and the option for its reorganization and restructuring of suggestions. And the last one is a liquidation. In the case the insolvency resolution process fails, the liquidation process shall commence in which the asset of the company will realize to pay off the creditors. Okay, so two different, you can say, points. So, in the first one, there's a process uh, of uh, insolvency resolution. And this, the creditors themselves says that whether the company is able to pay off their debts or not. So, but in the, but if the insolvency resolution process fail, then the liquidation will gonna be started. And in this case, the assets of the company should be sold out in order to pay the debt of the creditors. So this is actually related to the dissolution of the firm according to the Company Act. And you can say our uh, Bankruptcy Act. Thank you so much.